Anybody there? Yo, yo, Dennis, what's up? Here, dude, you take those. Mm -hmm. Nice. Finish them off. Yeah. How you doing, brother? What's up, Simon? Homemade slingshots. Hey, good morning. Yeah, I'm doing all right, man. Doing all right. The end of the week's coming up. I'm gonna have to go back to work on Monday, but uh, it's all right. Smoked a pork uh, a pork belly yesterday on the on the pellet grill. It was it was out of this world, man. It was incredible. So I guess we're just going to wait a little bit, see if everyone gets in here, and then uh, then we'll go ahead, we'll tilt that camera down, we'll get some bands made, and uh, I'm going to show you some new goodies that I got, we're going to make a little bit of an announcement I think you'll enjoy. Anyway. I'm feeling naked without my hat on, look at that, my, my remnants of manhood here, it's pretty sad, we'll get a good baseball cap, you don't need to look at that. So what's everyone's plans for today? Yeah, I'm actually hoping to do a couple of vids, uh, uh, vids of uh, smoking and slinging. I'm hoping. Uh, once uh, summer starts rolling around and starts getting a little bit warmer, I think I'm going to fire up the old uh, Pit Boss pellet grill, throw a slap of meat on there. We'll do some shooting throughout the day. We'll check on, in on it from time to time, a little bit of food porn, and uh, then we'll just get into um, – We'll just get into uh, into a dinner at the end with a with a nice cold beer. No. <laughs> yeah. Where is it? That's Trevor. Steve, what's going on, brother? <clears throat> yeah. That pork belly was something else, man. It's the first time I ever did one like that. I've I've smoked bacon before, but uh, this time I left the skin on and made it nice and crispy. Ooh. It was something something special. Sorry, guys. I don't know how many people are going to join us today, so we might as well just get right in on to, into it. It should be fun. But uh, so I got a couple of bands here, band sets. We've got some uh, Sniper Sling 0.5. We're going to be doing an active band length of 120. And I've got some Sniper Sling 0.60, and we're going to do an, 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 an active band length of uh, 120 on these as well. So Basically, what the plan is going to be is uh, we're going to go ahead and chop these guys up, get them tied on to uh, get them tied on to um, a frame, and uh, probably tomorrow I'll be doing a test on 0 0.50 sniper sling and 0 0.60 sniper sling uh, speed test. But what I'm going to do this time is uh, for the 0.5, we're going to do uh, three eight uh, eight millimeter steel, and for the 0.6, we're going to do uh, <laughs> spill the beans. Yeah. Then the point six we're going to be doing is a, um, is a, uh, is three, eight steel. So we'll test those out and, uh, we'll see what kind of speeds we can get out of them. Uh, both of these guys have a, uh, really nice elongation. The six is a little bit less than the seven, uh, than the, uh, a little bit more, uh, sorry. The point six, point five are just about the same. There's very, very slight variances in, in the stretch, but, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get these uh, bands tested up and uh, made 
they're going to be two different um, two different tapers, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and start uh, start testing them out, see what kind of speeds we can get. Both of them will be maxed out, though. You're absolutely right, Steve. I've got two beauties here today. For those of you who are uh, who are uh, native to Montreal, I've got two of them. Both of these guys are from a company called Saint Amboise. This one is a session IPA, and this one is a grapefruit IPA. Don't be fooled. It's a true IPA. It's not one of those uh, girl drink drunk drinks. There, you know those uh, those um, those sweet things that taste like a Rambler or whatever. It's none of that garbage. This is like legit IPA with a little bit of a uh, little bit of grapefruit in there. It's gonna be great. Let's start with the session. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Hey, how's it going, Dave? Oh, that's so good. Oh. So, guys, I got two new frames in this week. Both of them from Prime 4 Catapults. I want to show them to you. Um, the first one is a Beagle version 2. Now, that he made some slight differences on this, guys. He put a, a, a deeper, a deeper um, fork, uh, fork gap inside there. Before it used to come to about here, but I'm going to do a video on a comparison of these uh, a little bit later. But uh, this is a uh, aluminum frame, G10 model, and yes, first day out, I frame hit it right where my finger is. I was in my back pull, looking at it, and it didn't feel right on my anchor point, so I went to uh, I went to adjust it. It slipped out of my hand, and I shot the freaking frame. I almost lost my I almost lost my crap. It was terrible. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, but that's what happened. He also sent me a new Casper. Now, I don't know if you guys are seeing all the colors in here, but he's got he's got some green, some blue. I mean, this thing really comes alive out in the sunshine. Really gorgeous looking frame. And another thing, too, he put on there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that camera's not going to be too blurry, but he put in a couple of sights on both the frames, on the, on the clips themselves. Both of them have a G10 clip. He's got one set up for... Uh, for uh, 10 meters and one set up for 20 meters. I'm really looking forward to testing those out and see how well they do. But just from my uh, my initial uh, tests out in the uh, out in the basement, the uh, the um, the top corner is like a it's like a laser beam. I I'm basically been setting up a uh, uh, a paper target in my catch box, and my whole goal is to actually shoot out that whole red spot just to eat the whole thing out. Um, I'm trying to keep everything in that, in that, uh, four centimeter spot. I mean, yes, I do have some shots that are going out, but for the most part, I'm trying to eat up that whole red spot. I'm trying to do it in 50 shots and, uh, it's doing pretty good. Hey, how's it going free will? Yeah, I know it happens. It's still a heartbreaker though. When you get something really nice like that and uh, it just blows up on you, but, uh, whatever, you know, and I, I was about 200 and 250 shots in too, and I was shooting this little, uh, I finally got some eight mil steel in too, by the way, guys. So I think I'm going to be switching back, back to eight mil uh, for my target shooting. Uh, I was originally an eight millimeter uh, shooter, and uh, anyway, I couldn't. It, it got to a point where shipping shipping to Canada uh, for the for these steel balls, it would cost me like twenty six dollars for say uh, I don't know, like two thousand bullets or something like that. They were like fourteen, fifteen bucks each. They were really cheap. And uh, the shipping was 75 US, 75 bucks US. Plus, he had to pay duty coming in. It was just killing me. So, uh, <laughs> and the grapefruit is really good. It is really good. But, uh, uh, yeah, bro, up the irons, man. I love Iron Maiden, favorite band. So many great songs. But, uh, yeah, so. I had I'd, uh, been into, I guess, about 200, 250 shots, and my uh, my thumb was starting to get tired, and I was starting to waver a little bit, and I had it up there just to try to adjust it, just to get it to feel right, and I whoop, slipped out of my hand, and yeah, said a whole lot of bad words, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll survive. We'll move on from there. <laughs> yep. The, uh, the Casper, this is another frame that I, uh, I absolutely love, and uh, I'm pretty curious to see how... How he's got those set up for uh, for 10 meters and 20 meters, because that is about the distance 
when I'm lining up, I do drop it down maybe about a maybe about uh, four mil or close to a quarter inch somewhere in that spot when I'm aiming uh, on my on my fork frame, and uh, it seems to work pretty good. Steel balls, buddy. Steel balls. <laughs> yeah. Iron balls. Yeah. But uh, so that's about it for now. So I guess uh, we'll get into uh, making these bands, and then we'll uh, talk a little bit more. Just because you're so curious, Mo, I'm going to make you wait, brother. Brother. <laughs> uh. Yeah, the blue and green, man. I really love it. And I'm hoping uh, when I get outside and start shooting this a little bit more, I'll be able to show you the... Uh, I'll be able to show you the how how that those colors come alive. It's I mean in here it's kind of dark, but the, the colors on this thing are just absolutely beautiful. The blue and green. Andrew does amazing work. He really does. Absolutely love his frames, and they're so comfortable. Seems a little small on my hand, but when I put it in there, it's so comfortable. Oh, we're not even gonna get into the nuts, buddy. All right. So I guess I'm gonna tilt you guys down. I'll show you what we're getting into here. I got a couple of a uh, couple of band templates. We're gonna use a um, a twenty five to twelve twenty five fifteen. Sorry about that for the uh, for the point six, and we're gonna use a twenty four twelve for the uh, for the point five. I am gonna I am I'm not trying to compare um, the point six to point five. I just want to see what kind of speeds they're gonna get with a taper that's good for that. Um, Shooting, shooting the, uh, I think shooting the, the uh, point, uh, the three eights, the three eight steel, the 9.5 mil with, uh, with a, a taper made for, made for uh, uh, eight mil steel isn't really doing it any justice. So we're there. I am going to test them probably both in the same video, but they are going to be uh, a little bit messed, um, uh, uh, separate. I don't want them to, to be compared to each other at all. Rush, best band of the galaxy. Oh, you're a Rush fan. <laughs> That's cool, man. Rush is all right. I like Rush, too. They're pretty good. I heard their drummer just passed away, too, not too long ago. Tell me about it, brother. I do not want to hit my hand with a ball at all. That would uh, that would suck so bad. I've had a close call. I nipped, I nipped the, just the tip of my finger one time. That was pretty bad. Anyway, I'm gonna tilt this guy down. We're gonna get to work, get some of these, uh, get some of these bands tied up, and uh, then we'll move on to uh, to other talk about uh, what's coming up. So here we go. Let me turn it down here. How's that look for you guys? All right, so I got a, uh, yeah, a little bit more there. I've got two two pieces cut, pretty much identical. They are going to be on the short side. We're trying to max these puppies out, see what kind of speed we can get out of them. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give these a little a little wet down so we can stick them together so they don't move around on us. All right, we're kind of looking good here. Give that a little flip. There we go. All right. Now these bands are uh, incredibly, incredibly stretchy. So uh, 
actually picking a band taper uh, for these guys, especially when you're getting your um, your your uh, your templates. It's probably best to even order your templates for uh, for the bands that you're going to be shooting. So if you're shooting the same bands all the time, it'll work out better if you uh, you know say for example if you prefer this template or this taper with a certain band. You can buy it to that. They do have some other actual markings on them, but I found that uh, some of these are uh, some of these are a little bit on the uh, ah. You know what? Never mind. I'm losing my words here. Let's just uh, do one thing at a time. I can't multitask. All right. One thing I will say, guys, when you're making uh, all any of your bands, it's always best to use a a brand new blade. Uh, I'm not saying to change the blade up every single time, but what I am saying is, is that uh, if it is not perfectly sharp, and you're cutting through, say, the midpoint here, and you get a sticky spot, there's a good chance that's gonna that's gonna be the spot where it's gonna fail. So always better to uh, to start off with a with a good fresh band, especially if you're cutting too deep like we are today. All right, let's get the point six going. Looking pretty good. Same kind of deal. I'll tell you what, guys. Thinking about having this thing roll over one of my fingers actually keeps me up at night. Total nightmare. Yeah, it is pretty good. <laughs> yeah, the beer's working for sure. All right. So there we go. We got one, two, three, four, five. Six and seven, perfect point six band sets. I'm telling you guys, if you if you aren't using one of these things, I've got about five or six of them at home now. And uh, let me tell you, they're, they're awesome. This is the way to go for sure. All right, let's put the point six over here. All right, we got a volunteer. Perfect. Now, what I like to do. Is these little fellas here are going to have a uh, an active band length of 120. Just about. So let's just uh, back that up. What I normally do is I tie a little line on there, or I write, draw a little line, just to get the uh, just to get one centimeter from the end to make sure I keep true to my to my active band length, and then I'm going to um, just put that line on the inside of the pouch in there. So we're not losing anything. All right. Now back when I started making bands, I used to just uh, stick a corner through the hole and kind of fight its way through. 
and I had actually a couple of them rip on me while I was trying to pull the band the band through, and it uh, kind of frustrating when you have to when you're uh, when you're wasting rubber like that. But now I just uh, give both ends a stretch, and then you're able to slide the pouch forward with your fingers. I'll show you again when I get into the next one. It keeps uh, it keeps your pouch keeps your pouch and your bands in a little bit better shape instead of uh, instead of putting any extra pressure on them for no reason. Well, that one's doing good. All right, we're going to go with the constrictor knot today. Now, you know, the first time I tried doing this constrictor knot, it, uh, it held quite nicely for about 200 shots, and it started coming loose. And I realized I was kind of worried about um, making it too tight and having the, the cord cut the bands. But uh, I don't think that's uh, really the, the really the worry at all. What I started to do just to be on the safe side was doing a double a double wrap. Now you're supposed to pass the line over the uh, over the, um, over the uh, the tag end. Well, I started doing a double a double wrap, and uh, it solved that problem. Now, once I tighten these things up, they never ever come loose ever again. one now now nah, you're the best buddy all right let's get that next one yeah so what I was saying was you put that little piece in through there give it a stretch then your pouch will slide right up nicely, and then it'll be easy to uh, to adjust. Make sure you get it all seated properly. You don't you don't really want to uh, to stress out your bands any more than you need to, and that includes using your little calipers here and stretching this guy out. You don't need to stretch it to the max. How many of you guys are constrictor knot users? Or do you guys prefer the belt or anything like that? The belt or the, uh, there we go. Nice little band set, ready to go. We're just gonna cut those little ears off. All right, there's one done. Oh yeah, you like the amber belt? I had a little bit of trouble with it. Wrap and tuck, eh? I just found it was a little bit bulky at the uh, at the end. But 
I don't have much experience with it at all. Wrap and tuck on the, um, you know, for a fork attachment is fine, but at the pouch, I've tried it a few times and it held up fine, but it was, uh, I just found it, it felt kind of weird. I wasn't used to having that bulk there, but it is definitely a tried and tested, uh, and tested, uh, tried and tested uh, method of pouch attachment. That's for sure. Let's get rid of some of this junk here. All right, now we're doing the uh, 0.5. We're using the 8 mil, uh, the 8 mil pouch, quite a bit smaller. Same kind of deal. Yeah, the amber belt kind of disappears. Eh? It's super, super small and tiny on there. I started to go away from cuffs. I was using cuffs for a while, but uh, I kept on having a couple of those, a uh, couple of those come loose on me, and I couldn't figure out why. One of them was fine. The next one was coming loose, and. Uh, I don't know if there was a uh, variations in the tube that I was using or, or what, but I started switching over to uh, the constrictor knot. Seems to be working well for now. So I'll be releasing a video today. Uh, it's going to be uh, kind of exciting, I think. I think you guys will enjoy it. So once we're done, uh, once we're done with this one here, that other one's going to go live. What string do I use for the constrictor knot? Um, well, really, you can use just about anything. Uh, in the beginning, I was using um, waxed uh, uh, leather thread. It was a wax cotton thread using uh, that was used for uh, for leather craft. That worked uh, really really well. I'd never had an issue with that. Uh, after uh, after, but it is kind of ex on the expensive side, I guess. Uh, then now I'm just using uh, the inner strands of paracord. I've got I've always got the paracord lying around. I've got these little uh, I've got these little um, hanks of cord that I've had lying around from my uh, from my bushcraft YouTube days. And I decided to uh, just start uh, chopping them up, getting rid of them. Considering I have a bunch of uh, I have a bunch of paracord at home anyway, and uh, I started using started using uh, the inner strands of paracord, and uh, it works really well. It's nice and light, tiny. Can't complain at all. There we go. Cut that last little ear off there. Give them a test. Nothing's moving. We're a good deal. All right. Let's get these frames uh, all dressed up, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Where did I put that thing? All right. I guess we'll go with the uh, with the beagle for the lighter the lighter steel. Open that up a little more. Hey, how's it going, DS Field Sports? How you doing, bud?
Oh, nothing much is going on just yet, bro. We haven't, uh, we've just uh, showed some, uh, some new frames that I got. We're making some bands here. And uh, both these bands are uh, sniper sling. Uh, one of those sniper sling, 0 0.50. The other one is 0 0.60. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to head on out and speed test them. And uh, hopefully release that video before Saturday, depending on uh, depending on how long it takes to edit. But uh, should be pretty cool. I will give you another look at these frames in just a second. Once I get these guys all uh, all dolled up here. All right, there's one all done, ready to go for eight mil steel. Ooh, it's gonna be nasty. All right, haven't put a band set on this guy yet. This will be the first time. These actually came in uh, just at the end of the last uh, of the uh, live stream we did last time. Hey, well, I'm boring the hell out of you guys. What are you, uh, <laughs> what are you guys shooting today? So just for uh, just to let you guys know, just today I ordered some uh, sniper sling black. I think it'll be fun to test some uh, some black versus yellow uh, once once that arrives. I also tried uh, tried ordering some 100 percent, and uh, man, it was uh, working out on that on that website. It's kind of uh, kind of tough, man. I don't understand what the hell the deal was. I had everything ready to go, going through the. Uh, Get ready to pay, and then uh, the PayPal thing never went through and caused all kinds of trouble. Sniper Sling Point Seven. I haven't tried that yet. I've only tried the six and the five, and uh, we're going to be testing those out hopefully tomorrow. Hey, how do you like that black man? I got some coming. It's in the mail. Made the order today. If it's anything like the yellow, it's going to be a win for sure because the yellow is real nice. There we go. That's 0. 0.6. Whew. Buddy, that's going to be quick. All right, guys. There's our two frames, all dolled up. We got the Casper. We got the Beagle version two ready to go. All right, I'm going to bring you guys up for just a second. Sorry, guys. The announcement. Well, the announcement is is just recently one of my videos reached a hundred thousand views. Now, I put out a quick little video, uh, not a video, but, uh, but a little post saying thank you guys for, uh, for all the support you've given the channel and all that stuff. And uh, I don't think that was enough. So I'm going to be doing a giveaway. And right after this live feed is done, I'm going to be posting that video of the giveaway uh, for all of you guys to, uh, to jump on and uh, have a good time and check it out. So basically what the plan is going to be is uh, I'm going to send out this video. Uh, we're going to run it for two weeks. And uh, depending on how it goes, um, I'm going to pick a winner on the 20th. So uh, I'll probably release that uh, today just after all this. And uh, it is going to be a Beagle, just like this one, except for all aluminum. It's not going to have any of the G10 on it. So it's going to kind of look like this on both sides. But I'm going to be giving out one of these. The rules are pretty simple. You just, I just want you guys to subscribe, uh, like, and share if you can. 
and then in the comments write down uh you know basically write down in that video that's going to be popping up right after this um that you're in and uh, what hand you shoot with and that's about it and when i pick the winner uh we'll probably we'll maybe do it on a live or i'll just release a video we'll see what i have time for but uh when we do that basically what's going to happen is uh i'm going to confirm your address uh, the hand you shoot again, just to make sure we're 100% right. Then I'm going to send everything off to uh, to Andrew. He's going to build you a frame and he's going to send it directly to your house. How does that sound? You guys in for that? <laughs> Steve's the target factory, man. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good, brother. I will uh, definitely take you up on that, Alan. Thanks a lot for that. Hey, cool. You made it this time, man. There he is. Yeah, brother Kay's in the house again. That's awesome. Cool, man. So basically, uh, right when we're done here, uh, we'll, we'll end up heading on over to... Uh, We'll head on over to, um, I'll, I'll, once we're done here, I'll release that video and uh, just follow the rules on there. That's going to be the video where I'm going to take everyone's I'm ins from, and uh, we're going to go from there. It uh, should, be, should be pretty cool, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. I'm telling you, the, the Beagle is a really, uh, it's a real great frame, and I love shooting it. It's one of my favorites, right up on the top there. Um, and a while back, uh, I got Andrew to make me a, uh, to make me a custom one. Uh, it's all black G10 and uh, and uh, with yellow liners. I don't know if I showed that to you already, but man, is that a sweet frame? I may have actually put it in one of my videos. Actually, thinking about it now. So, in case anybody's wondering what the what stuff I use, um, these scissors for the bands I got from Caddyshack, and my goodness, are they sharp? They work great. I picked this guy up off a of simple shot. Probably paid too much for it, but uh, it's a pretty decent uh, band tying jig. Works great. I've tried two others and they both sucked. Uh, this one's pretty easy to use and uh, works just fine. Obviously, I've got a mat. You guys saw that, and I use this uh, this Ulfa um, uh, rotary cutter, and it's pretty cool too. And uh, what I found is, if you guys have a strop at home, you can actually sharpen these bad boys up, and it works out pretty good. The website you have to pay like you would send money to a friend, but I've got more rules and. I need and more. One way I'll get you sorted out, bro. Oh, really? So that's all I do is I send them. Uh, I send them some cash, and uh, it's all good like that. Okay, I gotta figure out how that works then. I gotta figure out how that works exactly. Let's see if I can. Oop, what did I do here? And hopefully we can get that figured out. Because if that's the case, I'll just send. I'll just send them the cash myself. But I'll let you know. Oh, you uh, Chuck and Steel, you have a you have a beagle as well. Oh, that's so good. So, what do you guys uh, what, what's your favorite frames? Have you guys tried uh, have you guys tried some of those uh, those top ones that I, I like to recommend, like the uh, the Venator and the Titan Hunter? Have, have any of you guys have any? Uh, have any experience with those? Oh man, Alan, you're the best, bro. I'm gonna work it out with him. I'll let you know. Can I pinch grip a beagle? I don't know. Maybe. So actually, I, I could probably shoot it like that. It's not the most comfortable, but uh, I could probably shoot it like that. I know Andrew shoots uh, pinch grip all the time. I'm catching up on you, bro. I got three. I got three beagles at home now. One of them I gave to my son, but uh, man, they're they're great frames. 
You, you can also, I think you can pinch grip a Casper better though. I think it's more, uh, more comfortable. It is a slightly more expensive frame, but it's, uh, it's nice. Me too. The Venator is one of my favorite frames uh, of all time. I really, really love that frame. Wasp Dinger. A 3D printed Evo. Very cool. Yeah, you know what? I actually wanted to get another Venator, uh, but in the, uh, in the bead blasted uh, version of it, so I'm going to have one black, one bleed black, uh, bee blasted, and uh, they've been out of stock for a while. I haven't seen them. Actually, I think uh, when I went looking on the website, I couldn't even find any. It kind of sucks, actually, because they're, uh, they're a really, really good frame. But also the FTC, the FTC is pretty sweet, too. I have one here. i got to do a video on it, but uh, my goodness, does that thing shoot well. That whole 85... The 85 to 90 millimeter uh, offset offset frames. For some reason, man, it's like it's like making love to my hand. Those things are they feel so good. Also thinking about getting an Evo. Yeah, I can't go wrong with an Evo. I have so many frames that I want. I want to get that Field Pro. I like the fact that it's got clips on it, and I don't have to do that wrap and tuck. Wrap and tuck really holds well, but man, I always end up having problems with it. I don't know if it's my fat fingers or my lack of dexterity or. I don't know what to say, but it gives me trouble. Go on their site or eBay. Hey, how's it going, Green Alloy? Yeah, the FTC is real sweet, man. I'm telling you. And for... Uh, I should probably do that coming up. I got. I also got another uh, frame coming from Sniper Sling. I want to put together a video of uh, good budget options to buy uh, for those starting out that are, that are working on a budget. And I think uh, I've got a few uh, really good ones lined up uh, that I have here, and uh, two of them are from Wasp. Actually, it's kind of hard to uh, it's kind of hard to um, to take Wasp out of that equation. They they make fantastic frames. Yeah, the Black Knight Evo is also cool, and it's also reasonably priced too, especially for those of us in uh, in Canada where a dollar is the same thing as a peso almost. It's a uh, it's kind of hard to uh, it's kind of hard to uh, to pay that exchange in shipping sometimes. It's a killer. Carrot Slingshot? What is that? What is my most expensive slingshot? Hmm. I think my most expensive one is probably the Casper. I think that's probably my most expensive slingshot. I don't have uh, too many that are uh, obscenely expensive. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, I was, um, I am actually saving for a uh, for a uh, a Mustang from John Jeffries. I absolutely love that frame, and I know it's uh, it's basically similar to the FTC. Uh, but my goodness, that guy does amazing work. It's beautiful. Have I tried shooting trick shots? Yeah, I've done a couple of card cuts. Uh, I actually, I'm working on this one where I take a, a couple of bottle caps and I'm going to be shooting that one with my, walks, my Wasp um, Unifox. I did a video on it of me failing. I hit that, this, the two caps. I stack two caps on top of each other and I try to hit the top one off first and then the second one from 10 meters. I've tried doing that. I keep on hitting both of them. I think it was, um, I was having too many, too many dropping uh, too many, too much drop on my on my ball, so I am going to switch up the ammo on the band set for the next time I attempt it. But uh, I'll be attempting that one again soon. Uh, I've tried, I've knocked the heads off of matches, uh, uh, lots of card cuts, all kinds of stuff like that. I'm going to be doing more this summer for the uh, for the uh, slow mo Sunday videos and uh, and whatnot, things like that. Should be fun. Moving targets. I haven't tried too much. I was uh, having my son throw some cans up in the air, and I was shooting it with that, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Um, but when I try to do it by myself, I ended up putting three good dents in my Evo, so uh, I won't be doing that by myself anymore. Uh, I'm going for a Titan. Trevor, all I can say is 
the Titans a fantastic frame. It is one of my top shooters to my top three, top five. Uh, I mean, you can mix those guys around really, but uh, I love that frame. It's uh, it's hard to put it down really. Yeah, slingshot some car parts. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I've seen some made out of tools too. It's pretty neat. What's the? Uh, we had some. Um, I've made a couple of frames out of, uh, uh, mostly out of wood and things like that. But I have a few ideas of some other stuff like uh, like wrenches, making pickle forks out of wrenches and uh, that kind of thing. I just got to see if I can get my hands on the, on the right ones and see where we can go from that. But uh, do I shoot pickle fork? Nobody, not yet. I'm actually in the, in the works of actually uh, uh, picking one up, but I want to find one. I was this close to buying the Mr. Pickles. This is a, I like the, uh, I like the attitude that little fella has, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just not big on the ocularis uh, uh, setup. I just don't like it. It's not for me, but um uh, Pardon me. I am still looking for. Uh, I am still looking for uh, another another uh, another another pickle fork to start off with. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. South Wales, how's it going, man? Hey, I'm glad you're enjoying the channel, bro. I appreciate it, uh, Green Alloy. Ross does a pickle fork. Eh? Have you have you shot that pickle fork before, uh, Dave? Is it uh, is it good for a newbie? <laughs> Basically, what I'm asking. So I guess uh, with the, with these pickle forks, when you guys are pulling them back, are you uh, are you speed bumping them off your thumb so you don't uh, you don't eat one in the in the in the, in the paw or what? How are you guys doing it? The Kodiak. Oh, very cool! Is it a design that the you and I, uh, you and Andrew kind of uh, got together and uh, designed it, or it's your design and Andrew's making it? Uh, what, what's the deal with that? Long draw shooting. Yes, I have. Uh, I've done a couple of. Uh, I think I did a ten shot Tuesday um, with uh, with that, and I did a card cut. Uh, one time with a um, with a uh, with a butterfly with a butterfly uh, shot like a three quarter butterfly, and it was actually uh, four days after I started doing it. Uh, I tried the first day and I hit my face like six times. So I got a hold of uh, uh, Island Made Catapult Shane. If you guys know him, he gave me a couple of tips, and uh, four days later I split a card with it in six shots. It took me six shots to get it. Yeah, you got to twist the pouch, I'm sure. Shoot darts? I'm not doing that. Nope, all it takes, I mean, look how close I was with this guy. It just slipped out of my hand because I was getting tired. And uh, yeah, I'm not doing those darts. No way. I can't afford uh, that kind of damage and that kind of time off of work and whatever. It's uh, it's not good, especially if I work with, when you work with your hands. Some of these other guys, like, uh, you know, like Chris Graffin, he's a, he's a superstar shooter. And uh, he knows though he knows the warning signs maybe before he gets tired or whatever, but I, I can't take that risk. Oh, uh, bro! If you're looking to uh, to follow me on Facebook, uh, Adam, just look up or Alan. Sorry, just look up uh, Adventure Time Outdoors. Uh, I'm the only guy around with that with that name, and I do a lot of. Uh, all my bushcraft and uh, my other um, and some of my slingshot stuff, I put it up on there on Facebook. So you can you can check me out there and uh, shoot me a message anytime, and I'll uh, I'll try to get a hold of you through there as well. Darts with pickle forks? No, nah, I'm not doing it. <laughs> no way. That's no, like Russian roulette. Uh uh Oh, that's really cool, man. I'm out to check out the. Uh, check and steal. I'm gonna have to check out that design and see how it looks. Looks pretty. It sounds pretty cool. 
I like a lot of his uh, a lot of his uh, designs. He's got that uh, is that the PFX. He's got uh, the Dandelion. It's another one. I, I don't know why he doesn't uh, promote that one more often. That that's a fantastic frame. I love it. It looks great, and that with clips would be would be a would be an absolute murderer. That thing. I'm telling you. Huh. He's got a he's got a pickle a pickle fork that can shoot arrows. I got a bunch of arrows at home. That might be fun. One point eight k. Good job. Yeah, I'm I'm doing my best, man. Trying to grow this channel up. Trying to get it uh, to you know to uh, just make it a little bit bigger, have a little bit of fun, and uh, whenever uh, whenever things come up, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to start doing more giveaways and things like that as well. So, so the better the you know the the uh, the more the channel grows, the more it's going to benefit you guys actually. Yeah, bro, Chuck and Steel. I've watched a bunch of your videos, man. You're you're a dead shot, man. That's awesome. Uh, Chris is the man. I love that guy's channel. He's got a uh, hunting uh, skills. That guy can shoot something fierce too, man. Let me tell you. And I, I love his Titan Hunter. His designs are great. He's got a couple of others too that he had uh, just coming out. Uh, what's it called? The, the Champion or the Classic or something like that. Looks really, really good. And I like that Titan Pro he has too. I'm going to get that one eventually. Hey, Grinnell, I'm glad you enjoyed the channel, man. Stop by and drop a message anytime. Appreciate it. Oh, he really is. Chris is the man. Yeah, yours, bro. I love that guy. Let me show you his features. <laughs> that guy's channel is fantastic. Yeah, I was actually watching his channel long before I even got into slingshots. Yeah, long before. So what's everybody drinking today? Oh, you should, man. It's good to see all those, uh, you know, all your collection, see what kind of stuff you got going on, how many, uh, how many frames you have, what you recommend, what you don't. Uh, I'm going to be doing a video like that eventually soon, too. Oh, he really is, man. They actually had a show. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's here in Canada called uh, like Science Daily or some some uh, really crappy name for a show. But they had uh, Jorg on there, and they uh, he did some talking about all of his stuff and how he does it, and how he measures stuff, and how he creates his, his things and uh, his background in engineering. He's a real brilliant guy. Really? Oh, that's gonna be cool. I'll, I'll definitely watch that. Yep. That guy's a, that guy's a legend, really, in my eyes. Anyway, gamekeeper John. Nah, that guy's a, that guy's a legend too. So many good shooters out of the UK, man. It's crazy. Ah, oh, very nice. Homemade? Are you uh? Are you a are you a Canadian boy as well? Protein smoothie. Where's the broccoli, bro? <laughs> oh. Hey, if you guys uh, like the bushcraft stuff, let me know. Uh, I did a I did a uh, I did a bushcraft channel for six years before I came over here. Um, I discovered that. Uh, I discovered that I made an error on my channel when I set it up, and that's why my channel wasn't growing. I even had a, I even got in touch with somebody, and uh, and I asked them like, can you please uh, like audit my my channel, and find out what's going on? And I actually made it as a, uh, I actually made it as a, um, as a business channel, so YouTube doesn't promote it. 
So when I came over here, I was planning on taking all my videos from there and transferring them over here. I may still do that from time to time with some channels, uh, with some videos, uh, just to slip them in as some extra content. But they, uh, if you guys like the bushcraft stuff, I will do some more of that as well on top of that. But I will do some shooting in them anyway. Uh, I am now totally addicted to slingshots. I actually sleep with one under my pillow almost. That's how bad it's gotten. Yeah, Brother K, legend and an inspiration. Every time I watch his, ch his channel and watching his shoot shots, I, I want to do better myself. Born in Vancouver. Very cool. Oh, very nice. I have some family out in Vancouver. whole bunch of family in uh, Vancouver, Surrey, uh, a couple of other areas. Do I still make knives? I haven't made a knife in a while, but I am getting the itch. Um, I have some 1084 steel here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do uh, with it, but I'm thinking about making a carving knife, actually, the next one up. It's going to be a, a nice, small, uh, flat grind, um, probably one-eighth thick. It's going to be it's gonna be nice. Uh, usually, I used to go out with some larger knives, but... Uh, now, whenever I'm out in the bush, I think a, a three-inch knife is more than enough than I need for for uh, for for anything I need really out there. I mean, I, I, I can make a fire with my beard pretty much. I don't know what a carod slingshot is, man. You gotta you gotta fill me in. I have no idea. It's the first time I've ever heard of it. Yeah, I also I'm also really big on wild camping too. Uh, I used to do a little bit of car camping and whatnot when my son was younger. Uh, I'm gonna be trying him out probably pretty soon uh, in you know in wild camping. I just want to make sure that he's gonna be able to stay calm if we bump into a bear, uh, which does happen from time to time where we're at. Uh, I'm more concerned about moose really than I am of bears. Bears you could usually just give them a stink eye and give them a yell and they'll run away, but. Uh, Moose are, are ready to scrap and they, they don't mess around, especially if they're in the rut. They're they're a freaking nightmare. Yeah, yeah, I know a car piston. Yep. Oh yeah, maybe something under there. Oh, maybe I can get some parts. I don't know. I'll have to look around. But a few for my channel. I'll just put that. Your channel is why my son wanted to make a song. Really? <laughs> Man, surely, surely he could have done better than me. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Most of Northern North Sunshine Coast. You can haul in late. Oh yeah. That would be a, that would be a dream for me, man. Yeah, if I'm not shooting, I want to be fishing. I'm telling you. That's the uh, that's the way to go. I love my uh, I love fishing and uh, camping and oh, shooting things, man. It's just a uh, just the way to go. I'll have to look around and see if I can find some cool parts. Maybe we can do that and uh, and get there. I don't know. It should be it should be pretty neat to. Uh, to make some uh, interesting slingshots out of uh, out of some steel. Back at my old job, I used to be able to take home steel all the time because I work in the metal industry. And uh, but now where I'm at, I can't do it anymore, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I made an anvil and all kinds of stuff uh, from the other place. It was fun. Yeah, a lot of you guys down in the U.S. call it woodcraft. I just called it playing around in the woods back in the day and this bushcraft whole thing was new new to me um when i was a little kid i used to live right across the street from the woods so i used to wake up in the morning head out into the woods spend all day there with a with a canteen and a swiss army knife and come back home at the end of the day dirty is dirty from head to toe just having a blast that was my my thing we used to actually i had those uh those marksman uh, slingshots or the daisies or whatever you call them they're all the same thing really 
Uh, we used to have paintball wars in there and get fires going, cook lunch, and make, build forts and all kinds of stuff. It was fun. Yo, Izzy, what's up, brother? We got a local boy in the house. That's awesome. Another dead soldier. Round two. Everything is going good, Is Everything is going good. I was just showing the folks at home. I got two new frames here from my from our boy Andre. We've got a uh, we've got a new Casper, some different colors, and we've got a, a new Beagle, the version two. And uh, basically, what we're going to be doing, this one is dressed up in point six sniper sling. This one's dressed up in point five sniper sling, and we're going to be testing these bands out tomorrow. And I'll be posting that video hopefully Saturday, uh, maybe Friday night. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Lee, what's going on, man? Dude, uh, I just mentioned out, uh, mentioned to everybody, for those of you who are just joining, we're going to be doing a giveaway. Right after this video, or this live chat's done, I'm going to be posting that video. Um, you can go over, check over, check that out. Follow the rules that I put down there for you. And uh, in, in two weeks, on the 20th of March, I'm going to be picking a winner. Uh, either live feed or whatever. Uh, or I'll just do a video if I have time. I think you guys will enjoy that. It's going to be one of these, exactly one of these, but it's going to be, uh, it's not going to have the G10. It's just going to be uh, straight up aluminum. Uh, it's a real, real sweet frame. Just like the video of the first uh, Beagle I did. Oh, man, that's good. I keep forgetting about that, man. If you guys are ever in the Montreal area, or you're able to get your hands on some St. Ambroise beer, I'm telling you, it's worth it. Hey, Chuck and Steel, are you the one that had that red, that red, uh, that red version two beagle? Did Andrew post it up on Instagram? Because if that's the case, man, I was drooling over that frame. It is a beauty. Actually, for those of you who know is, uh, he just got he got a uh, he got a beautiful uh, Casper from Andre. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is if it was it bronze or was it brass uh, the inside? But man, let me tell you, with like, like a marble finish on it, oh man, it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. Yeah, man, I'm on Instagram, Adventure Time Outdoors. Yeah, it was bronze. Woo. Something else. I'm telling you. Gorgeous, gorgeous frame. It was yours, eh? My goodness. I even sent Andrew a message on that one. I'm like, who the hell is that for? It's, oh, it's one of my customers. <laughs> I was like, whoa, buddy. That was that was something else. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. I'll check out that car out and I'll see if I can uh, find one somewhere at a reasonable price and uh, maybe make a frame out of it. I do have access to a welder at work, so I can uh, mess around with that a little bit. I do have one Gamekeeper, John. I bought a kit uh, a while back, and I think I made a video of it. Um, I bought a kit. I shot it. It was real nice. The only trouble with uh, Gamekeeper's frames is a lot of the fork widths are too wide for my anchor point. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not a real big fan of anything much bigger than 95 millimeters. Uh, he does a lot of them over around... around uh, I guess around 100 millimeters and, and up, actually. He does a, a lot of uh, wider wider frames. So I try to avoid those a little bit. It's really not in my wheelhouse. Anything from around uh, 95, 90 is pretty good, 85 is pretty good. 90 is pretty much my sweet spot. Where I put that top fork is where I hit, as long as my release is all right. Oh, 
more expensive. You can get it for free, the old ones. Oh, maybe, maybe. Uh, over here in Canada, though, uh, these scrap yards and whatnot, they are uh, they don't let things go real cheap for anything. Yeah, every, everything is to turn a buck all the time. I do have a buddy of mine, though, that works on cars a lot. So maybe I can get him to, uh, to, to hand me one. That would be nice. If I end up uh, making any more knives or anything like that, do you guys want to see that vid? I can do uh, I can do the build of that as well if you want. Yep, 90 mil is my sweet spot too, brother. Wide forks or narrow forks? Which one will shoot faster? That's a good question. I have really no idea. I guess it all depends on the uh, I guess it all depends on the on the taper that you use, and I guess that's about it. I would probably lean more toward the smaller, the smaller one though. I think maybe. Yeah, the taxes, eh? Good old Canadian taxes. Yeah, I may do another knife vid. Uh, we'll see how how it all goes. Uh, I do have a plan. I've actually doing some leather work. I wanna. There's um, I've made a few. Uh, I guess a few leather projects as well. Uh, I think what I'll do is a, uh, I'm looking to make a, like a big bag kind of, I guess, something to hang on the side of me for when I'm out on a, out collecting forks and whatnot. And uh, there's a place that we buy our leather from over here in Canada called Tandy Leather. And they've got this, um, it's like a whole bison you can pick up for like uh, for like 200 bucks. Uh, I, I can make a bunch of things out of that. So um, I, may, I may go that way and do that one as well. On top of the knife, because I, I don't have any leather for a, for a sheet or anything yet, so I'll have to get the uh, all those projects done, start doing that, and then maybe uh, maybe start pumping out some knives again. Yeah, I think narrow too. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I've seen some of these guys that have these uh, slingshots that are super wide. They're like uh, like a foot and a half or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they're thinking. I mean, some of these guys they can shoot well with them, but uh, I don't know. Seems kind of silly to me. Definitely not pocketability though. Pocketability, that thing's junk. Why do your messages get deleted? Were they sent to me? A uh, green alloy. Did you send me a message on Instagram? No, I got nothing. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, Chuck and Steel. Does he have a, uh, a picture of that on um, on Instagram? The digital camel beagle. How many of you guys are on the slingshot forum? I don't know about you guys, but I'm sitting there watching these guys post their pictures of all the frames that they have. I spend most of my time drooling. It's like, holy smokes, I can't believe some of these guys have these gorgeous, gorgeous frames. I really want to get one of those ones from J5, too. He's got some uh, He's got some gorgeous, uh, cart the, the, what's it called, the Pocket Parasite? I think that's what it's called. My goodness. That thing looks like fun. You fang, why don't, why don't you post, man? Post what you got, bro. Everybody wants to see what you're shooting. There's no judgment there. They're awesome people, man. Slingshot community is the best. Just drop a line in there sometime, man. The 
A compound steel ball bow. No, I have not seen that. <laughs> really? It's too, oh man, you've already been at it for an hour, man. That's crazy. Last time too, the last uh, the last v, uh, feed, man. I couldn't believe how fast that that went through. Yeah, yeah I'll check that out on YouTube, man. That's cool. Green alloy. Are you looking for me on Facebook or Instagram? Spanish slingshots. You know what? I've seen a couple of guys shoot with these uh, with these crazy Spanish slingshots, and they all seem to shoot with them upright, like uh, kind of like this. There, I don't know. Some of these guys, man, they could shoot something fierce, man. But I I don't know how they do it. I've tried shooting like that before, and it's a absolute mess when they're when you're shooting with a front and back sight it almost seems like archery to me you know, it's like you're looking through a peep sight in a compound bow yeah green alloy you're looking to send somebody a message where he's trying to send me a message on facebook or on uh, instagram let me know Nah, no one's going to get mad, Chuck and Steel. It's all right. Those guys are actually legit. I was talking to uh, Gasper the other day. Man, that guy's something else. If you guys haven't seen him shoot, maybe what I'll do is uh, when we're all done here, I'll put a link down into uh, into his uh, YouTube channel, and you can check out uh, some of his shooting. Man, that guy's legit. Legit, and he's a, he's a really nice guy, too. I was actually trying to pick up a few things off of slingshooting.com today. Sent them a sent them a message trying to find out what the deal was because uh they won't send anything to Canada from the um from the Spain warehouse. And I was kind of pissed because uh I guess for about three months now I've been trying to buy GNOL uh, 0 0.50. I have a 7.0 here. I'm gonna be doing a speed test on those pretty soon. But uh they have them in Spain, but Spain won't ship to Canada. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Because uh, China doesn't seem to be getting them. It's taking too long to to, uh, to uh, restock their, you know, restock the warehouse. And uh, anyway, it's killing me. I do shoot two TTF a little bit. Uh, I prefer uh, OTT, but I shoot TTF. Uh, I got a pretty cool video, a ten shot Tuesday video of me shooting the Crazy Power Mini, uh, no tie version. Um, I have uh, three. Uh, 45, uh, 40 mil uh, flippers set up in three different colors. I take 10 shots, not shooting the same target uh, twice. So I, I have white, um, I think it was, uh, I don't know, white, yellow, and green. And uh, if I shoot the green one, I can't shoot the green one again. I have to shoot the yellow one. I got 8 out of 10 on that. I had no cuts in the video. I do shoot uh, TTF some from time to time, but I prefer the OTT. It was actually kind of weird. Uh, for some reason, um, I could pretty much pick up a 90 mil frame of OTT anytime and shoot it reasonably well. And after shooting it a little while, I get a little bit better with it. Um, with with uh, TTF, I don't know what it is, but sometimes I pick it up and I'll be I'll be nailing the target like like I've never shot better than that. And then I'll pick it up the very next day. And it's, uh, I don't know if it's an anchor point issue or what it is, but all of a sudden I'm frame hitting, I'm setting the ball all over the place. Uh, I get weird, uh, weird issues and I can't figure it out. It's the same band set. It's the same frame that I shot like a legend the day before. And I, I just can't figure it out. I don't know why.
Steel spinners in bulk. Hmm. Shipped here. If you're looking for bulk things like that, probably AliExpress is your best bet. They'll probably give you the best deal. It's going to take forever to get here, though. And uh, I'll tell you what. The steel, the steel spinners that I have, I think I got mine off of... I kind of want to say GZK, but I can't remember 100%. It might have been... Uh, it might have been, um, yeah, it might have been uh, uh, slingshooting.com if I'm thinking about it. No, I got them from Dan Kung, and I'll never, ever make an order from there again. But uh, I was using those, and after hitting them a couple of times, they started to spoon out a little bit, like they were getting a little concave. And I actually shot one, hit it dead center. It spun around a couple of times, and about two seconds later, a shot hit me right in the chest. Crazy. So it was like uh, I got a return to sender, hit me in the chest, hard enough to leave a little red mark on my chest. So I don't I don't play with those metal metal flippers anymore. Although they make an amazing sound when you hit them, I have one on my keychain of all the little dimples I put in it. Lots of fun. Yeah, I know a lot of people were doing that with it, making them out of old spoons. But um, do you find the do you find the um, the the cup the, the cup end? If you hit the cup end, do, they, do you get any return to senders that way? It's no big deal. You can always put them on the round end and just uh, smoke them that way. But that's fine. Yeah, all mine do too. All my all my steel spinners turn into, into spoons. Yeah. Yikes! Yeah, if I end up uh, blowing one of those things up in my in my house, ooh, my uh, my wife would lose her shit. Yeah, she wasn't big about the about shooting in the. Um, in the backyard either, but uh, after I made that catch box, everything was good now. So we had no no near misses or any trouble since I got away from those uh, those metal spinners. Green Alloy, where are you looking for me, bro? Are you looking for me on Facebook or are you looking for me on Instagram? Yeah, those steel spinners, boy. Ooh. Uh, but I'm telling you, that sound that they make, when I did that uh, quest for accuracy, I originally started with the steel spinners, the 30 mil uh, steel sp uh, spinners, and I was hitting those things. And that sound, bink, there's no way the camera's missing that. You know if you made a hit or not. Um, but if you're looking for a plastic uh, a plastic version uh, that's really, really good, that last take a beating and last long, man, the wasp flippers are the best. I've tried all these other ones that they sell uh, out of China and a few other spots, and I always end up blowing them up. I mean, I was shooting those things out in the winter. It's minus 15 outside. I'm hitting those with 3.8 steel traveling super fast, 260, 270 feet per second. And let me tell you, they took it no problem. They didn't break. They didn't crack. They didn't do nothing. They started to curve a little bit out. I just took them around, put them the other way, and they were fine. Titanium ones, they have them at snipersling.com. You can find them there. Not snipersling, uh, at slingshooting.com. They have the titanium uh, flippers. Oh. Yeah, I'm kind of... If any of you guys uh, tried to... Tried the GNOL uh, and any of their bands, really? What are your thoughts on those? I 
I agree with you, man. 15 mil, uh, uh, mil spinners. I've got one of the titanium ones. It's a two mil. Um, it's kind of okay. I just don't like the way they they, they feed the cord through it. And uh, stretching an elastic in that little slot that they put just cut the elastic. Didn't work uh, for me. I wasn't impressed with them, but hopefully I can get my hands on uh, – Hopefully I can get my hands on one of the one of the larger ones, and we'll see if that little slot on the inside is a little bit better. I don't know how they're cutting them, probably by laser or water jet, but that that slot is way way too small, and the hole is small for putting like a. In my catch box in my basement, I use a rubber tube, slingshot tube, um, the the twenty forty. I tie a couple of knots on it, and the the flipper will stay in the center no problem. But it's way too thick to fit through that little hole they put in that uh, in that thing. Yeah, I'm totally down with the 15 mil, though. That would be fun. Huh. Now, I find that the, uh, the, metal, the, the metal flippers, too, a couple of times, if you hit the stem on the top, they, uh, they end up chewing through your cord real quick. That's why I went away from them. You're constantly retying stuff in the catch box, and it became a bit of a pain in the ass. That, and you end up, uh, you end up shooting yourself. It kind of sucks. Yeah. Any suggestions on a decent catch box? Rain barrels, brother. Rain barrels, rain barrels, rain barrels. I absolutely love them. They're super easy to work with. And I'm definitely going to be using a, uh, I'm definitely going to be trying to find a smaller one, uh, you know, like keg size and uh, having, adding another one to the backyard because I've got that one big one that's out there. Works fantastic. I have no complaints for it, but I want to get another smaller one that I can hang in my house so I could shoot it in the wintertime. I'm using my, uh, my foldable, uh, you know, those collapsible ones. They're okay, but I ended up having some stitching uh, release in the back. And I shot a shot, went right through my catch box and into my wall. My wife doesn't know. Hashtag don't tell my wife. <laughs> but eventually she's going to catch me. But rain barrels make the best catch boxes. My opinion. Even if you end up shooting right through uh, through the, you know, the, um, the curtain and you hit the back, your ball's not going through. Those things are really durable. Yep, plastic barrels, man. Plastic barrels, rain barrels. Best way to go. Brother is, I'll send you some uh, I'll send you some pictures of the one that I did. Actually, you can see the video if you want, but uh fantastic. Just use that little lid at the bottom, unscrew it. And there, there's like a little screen piece at the bottom. Pop that screen piece out. And then when your balls fall in, they're just going to fall right through that thing into the bottom into a bucket. And you just dump them right back in your hand and you're good to go. And uh, I think the best way to go uh, on top of all that is uh, where, where the, the lid screws on to the bottom of your rain barrel, put some caulking in there and fill that up so none of your balls get stuck in the hole. After that, they'll all drop into your, your little catch bucket in the bottom. I don't think I'm allowed to hunt in my area. I did uh, contact the uh, the MNR, that's the Ministry of Natural Resources in my area, and asked them if it was possible to, to hunt with a slingshot. They said no. But then I asked for the documentation that says no, and they couldn't provide it. So I don't know what I'm going to do uh, with that. But uh, I do know in some neighboring provinces they do have it, and I'm very interested in hunting with a slingshot. So... Uh, you never know. Uh, I would definitely like to do it. I just don't want to do it right now because uh, I'm just worried that uh, somebody's going to rat me out or whatever it is and have to deal with police and whatever. It's just uh, it's just crazy. There's always some kind of Karen out there that's going to want to shit in your shit in your sandwich. You know what I mean? Is as soon as this this COVID thing's over, brother, we need to get together and just have a little shootout. It's gonna be fun, man.
Green Alloy, I will definitely check that out as soon as we're done here, brother. I do know some people who shoot in Ontario. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, but they do do it. They have hunting licenses. So if they do get caught, I guess uh, they can go with it. But uh, I do know some people who hunt in, in Ontario with a slingshot. Don't know if it's allowed, though. <laughs> Chuck and Steel, I agree with you 100%, brother. Stay away from those. Uh, stay away from those steel flippers if you're shooting over 250. Ah, oh, there's always somebody, man. There's always somebody's gonna call the police and rat you out. Always, always, always. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. And my other channel, I got harassed from people from doing a catch and cook, a with fish. Some uh, some PETA people just started climbing all over me, so I got rid of the video. I deleted it. It was just insane. They just wouldn't stop. Yes, I would absolutely like to go down to the U.S. and do some of those. Uh, and if it's in the eastern, eastern, northeastern uh, United States, I would definitely go down there and try my hand at a tournament. I'm pretty sure I won't do all that well, but there's a lot of guys out there that shoot better than I do. But... Uh, I would like to do it for the experience anyway. It would be fun. I'm actually more hoping I can get a club together over here in Canada where I can get a bunch of shooters together. Um, you tend to find uh, you tend to find uh, inspiration in people that are shooting around you. You see one guy doing better, it kind of ups your game. And uh, the only way you get better is by by testing yourself. So. Mr. Rolo, you shouldn't have told me that, bro. I will, uh, <laughs> damn it. I will end up having to pick one of those up next week. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Maybe if we ever get... Maybe we're gonna get out in that uh, that camping trip there, Mo. We'll uh, we'll do we'll have a good time together, man. It'll be fun. Yolo, bro. What are you talking? <laughs> oh, Mo's out of control. For those of you guys that don't know, that guy, that guy Moritz down there, he used to work with that guy. He's an awesome dude. All right, I'm going to do something here real quick. Oh, you only live once. Hey, man, I'm old. I don't know all this new stuff, man. All this new lingo. All right, I'm just going to release that, uh, that vid now. You guys can go check it out if you want. Or you can hang out here and we'll just wait until we're done. It's all totally up to you. Get this done here. All right. The giveaway vid is live. Woo. Beer's working. <laughs> I was shooting prairie dogs for land order. Ah, I know, man. The whole world's gone crazy. I don't know what the hell's going on, but it's kind of sad. Everyone seems to be uh you either have to pick a side or uh or you're hated by everybody. And I, I don't I don't like that tribal mentality, it just doesn't make sense to me. Your messages are getting deleted on YouTube. Okay, Green Alloy, don't worry about it, bro. I'm going to go and check it out. It's probably, for whatever reason, getting sent to my spam my spam filter. Uh, I'll check it right out and make sure everything's good. you be right back, Andy. I'm going to hold you to that, brother.
Cool, man, cool. So I got this neat paracord here. It's got actually uh, nine strands in it. Some of it I won't be able to use for uh, for um, for tying slingshots, but it's got some fishing line in it. It's got some 30-pound braid, which is pretty cool. And it's got this other one. You can see it's like a, like a red color on the inside. It's actually made for fires. It's like a jute, uh, a woven jute um, fibrous thing with some wax in it. And you light it when fire, and it burns for quite a long time. It's actually pretty good. This I won't be tossing out. The fishing line might go, but not that stuff. That stuff's going to go into my fire kit. Me and a green alloy. I don't know what the, what the hell the deal is. Sometimes it just does that, man. YouTube picks on people for some reason. I don't know what the deal is, but I'll definitely check it out right after we're done here, and I'll find out what's going on, and I'll shoot you a message after. Yeah, I couldn't imagine how that uh, how that first video turned out, getting 100,000 views on there. Got a lot of hate in that video, too, actually. Some uh, some guys making fun of how how my uh, some guys were making fun of how my um, how my catch box was at the back there. I just had an old swing set in the backyard and I hung some sheets, but uh, it worked out pretty good. It was working fine for me anyway. Got me through my first year of shooting until I made my my own catch box. Now I just I absolutely love that thing. That thing's that thing's awesome. What tape are you making, Andy? Ah, uh, Steve, that's the problem now, man. Everything in the world is mil spec. Look at this. This is a mil spec Allen wrench. This is a mil spec uh, plier. They add that crap to everything now. Uh, this is basically um, like a survival paracord or whatever it is. So they add their own junk to it. The original paracord that they made was the best one because it was actually used for paracords. Now they're just uh, they're just marking the shit out of everything. Kind of sucks. You never really know if you're getting real good stuff or if you're getting junk. It's hard to tell now. Hundred yard can shot, buddy. I would like to see that. 75 yards. Whew. I think my longest shot that I've done was with like 32 or 33 yards. That was on a can too. But I was able to put three in a row. I was pretty impressed. Twenty-two, twelve sniper sling. 0. 0.7. Whew. What size ammo are you using, Andy? No Bill Hayes. No Bill Hayes slingshots yet is. Um... I've seen a few that I like, um, and they're probably on the list, to be honest. But I got to make sure I can find one that's going to be in my uh, in my wheelhouse, in in my uh, in my fork gap that I like, my fork width. Sorry. I think you make some OTT uh, OTC, OTT slingshots too. Though. Bill's a legendary shooter, though, man. Holy smokes, he's got like a hundred yard card cut. Crazy. Nine millimeter lead. I want to try shooting some lead, but it's hard to get up here. Really hard to find. I was thinking about uh, purchasing some lead and just making my own, but it's just like, man, it's a lot of work. Six hundred and thirty yard shot, really? No, I never seen that one. Is that real? Six hundred and thirty yards? Holy smokes. That can't be real. Six hundred and thirty. It's almost a kilometer. No, half kilometer anyway.
<laughs> okay, I'm going to check it out, bro. <laughs> oh, is that the one that hits the barn and blows up? <laughs> Tell me that's the one. Tell me that's the one. Yeah, this is a seven strand. It's a seven strand uh, power cord, but uh, it's got one that's uh, one set up for fire and one with fishing line inside of it. It works. It, it's a, a really good quality uh, power cord, but uh, I've been buying some power cords that are just uh, absolute junk, and it's kind of kind of uh, kind of annoying. And they're calling it mill spec and all this stuff, and it's just uh, marketing marketing at its best. Everyone trying to sell their stuff, and they're just lying and they're getting away with it. Huh, leather pouches too. Hey, I'll have to check that out. When it comes to pouches, though, I gotta tell you, I've tried a whole bunch of them. I've tried the HTH pouches, I've tried the HTH Rue, the soft leather. I've tried uh, a bunch of them. And uh, when it comes down to it, I always shoot better with the GZK pit locating pouches. I don't know why. They're smaller, they're lighter. I always line my pouch up with that little crease in my finger. And uh, let me tell you, this this uh, this setup. It's like, uh, I don't know, for me it works. I, everyone's got their preference, but for me it works. Keeping, the, keeping everything the same, you know, on my, in, my, um, in my shot sequence. It's, it's very important to me. And I, I find I shoot better when I'm concentrating all, all these steps through my shots. And uh, taking these, um, these little pouches, lining them up, it works great for me. Butterfly shooting. Butterfly shooting is so much fun. I don't shoot as well with it. Um, when I'm trying to get the, uh, when I'm trying to, um, you know, to work on my accuracy and my form and everything like that, I always shoot short draw. But, but when I'm out just busting cans and having a good time, um, butterfly is real fun. And actually, the best frame that I've ever used for butterfly is uh, is one that I built myself. I have a video of it, uh, of me shooting a can with it. I uh, had one hanging on a string, and then I started shooting it and just bouncing, bouncing it down the trail in the woods. So much fun. I really, really like that little frame. And the weird thing is, is that the fork width on that thing is the same size as that one I got from Nick Hagerty. Um, and for some reason, I can shoot my frame, but I can't shoot his. I, I don't know why. I don't know what the deal is. It's definitely not a bad, uh, definitely not a bad frame. It's just, man, I, I don't know what the deal is. I don't, I don't know why I can't shoot that frame. Oh, they really are good, bro. The GZK pouches are fantastic. I love them. Oh, yeah, butterfly is way faster. You could probably tack uh, 50 to 60 feet per second or more on onto your onto your ammo from there. As long as you got uh, you got your stuff with your um, you know your your taper and your bands uh, tuned up properly, they can they shoot much much faster, much faster. But I have to say, speed isn't everything. I know we're doing a lot of band uh, band testing of uh, what shoots faster, what shoots slower, and really they're all pretty close, except for that uh, that GZK green. But I think there's something funky with that band set that I the band the material that I got. Um, I tried testing it with a with a micrometer, but it's designed for steel. I've seen all these other guys use them when they test it, and it's like this little uh, thing that comes down and pinches. The one I have, you have to you have to roll it down for steel. For you guys in the steel industry, you know what I'm talking about, but uh, it came in at like 5.2, but still it's like, man, they're, it's way, way faster than everything else. Uh, I, I'm almost, I'm almost, um, thinking about going to buy some GZK green 0.6 or 0.66 or 0.64, whatever it is, just to test the speeds on those two to see if I got screwed somehow. And they gave me faster, uh, different bands in a 50 box because it came in a 50 box. But the, the draw weight on it, I, I know I mentioned it before, the draw was really extremely heavy, but uh, I, I don't know.
you'd probably be able to speed up that uh, that um, that 190 feet per second. Uh, you you probably speed that up just by tuning up your bands properly, uh, changing changing up your taper, but it would make a difference, big difference. Yeah, I know. I see. I've seen the molds on uh, on eBay a couple of times. It's just the uh, the whole process and doing it, you know, in my house and whatever it is. It's just I don't know. I don't know if I want to get into all that uh, to make a, a a decent amount when I'm pretty comfortable shooting uh, uh, seven sixteen steel, and uh, I could probably go down to a nine a nine mil or nine point five mil steel or eight mil steel. It would be somewhere around the weight, the same weight. Probably be better for hunting, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, right now, I'm only target shooting anyway. So um, that's that, I guess. Really? I can shoot the Sparrow quite well. I, I kind of like that frame. I found that the, uh, the the fork width was a little bit on the small side. So I carved one that was slightly bigger at 90 mil. And uh, I really, really love that one. It is. I haven't tried Shishu yet. I've tried. Um, I've tried Great White though. I got that off of Caddyshack Catapults. Their uh, their shipping is pretty fast and reliable. And um, my goodness, let me tell you, that Great White is real nice. I know they also sell Shishu there too, but uh, I haven't tried it yet. It's definitely on the list though. I've heard a lot of great things about the about the draw on Shishu. Have you guys? Uh, any of you? Uh, any of you else uh, tried that before? Shishu bands. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, bro. The uh, the speeds that you get with uh, a full draw uh, for a butterfly draw, it, it's unbelievable. With 0.5 bands, you'll get uh, you'll get 50 50 feet per second faster than you would with like 0.66 on a short draw. It's fast. Yeah, I haven't tried a pickle a pickle fork shooter yet. I really, really want to, but uh, I'm a little nervous, and I'm trying to figure out what would be the best one for uh, for a guy just starting out with a pickle fork with a pickle fork to uh, to try out. Um, I'm thinking it's gonna have to be something probably made out of some kind of uh, some kind of polymer, some plastic, or some kind. Uh, I don't want to get a nice one and frame hit it and put a dent in it like I did with this one. That'll just piss me off to no end. Andy, I will be doing a video on uh, tapers for heavier ammo uh, very soon, uh, 7 sixteenths and uh, 3 eighths. Uh, I don't have anything heavier than that here, but what I will be doing is putting, uh, making a couple of different tapers according to this precise chart that one of, uh, one of my uh, subscribers um, sent me of what their recommendations are with uh, certain types of ammo. And uh, I'm going to be trying those out, see how what see how they work out and then I'm going to try a couple of tapers myself and I'm going to shoot a video on that and see what kind of speeds we can get. I'm thinking we'll probably do uh 2012 uh 25 15 and then uh the one that they recommend and we'll see how how it goes. I got to start writing all these down. Got a, got a lot of ideas coming to me, but uh, not enough time to to do all these videos especially with all the snow. <laughs> absolutely chuck and steal you actually ha you have to pick your poison um for me if i'm going to be busting cans and that kind of thing uh shooting butterfly shooting butterfly is real sweet but if i'm going to be going after these really really small targets you know like uh like bottle caps uh 30 mil flippers or 2.5 mil flippers 
that kind of thing for me the short draw the short draw is where i'm making my where i'm making my contact hmm instinctive shooters you know i was a when i was shooting archery i was an instinct uh, instinctive shooter uh and i did pretty well i was getting groupings like uh like six centimeters or whatever it was at 20 meters I was doing real well. Unfortunately, I just couldn't couldn't handle the, at the club anymore, and I'm not allowed to shoot them in my backyard. So, office rubber band, like you mean those regular elastic bands? No, I never tried those. <laughs> never tried those. I've seen some guys actually looping them together to make slingshots, though. I, I've I've seen that before. And when I was a kid, we used to make them out of rubber tubes from uh, from bicycle tires. We used to make rubber bands from that. And uh, they shot. That's all I'll say about that. Sorry, right, folks. I don't know about you, but we've been at it for uh, an hour and 45 minutes now. It'll take forever for this uh, video to render. So I think uh, I think we'll cut it just about now. Unless you guys are still uh, still wanting to chat, we can stick around a little longer if you want. But uh, I think we'll probably just wrap this guy up, and uh, I'll see you all again soon. You guys head on over there and check out that other video. And uh... oh, Dennis, you just came in. I was just about to get ready to leave. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's about it, guys. I think we're gonna wrap it up, but. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for joining us on this uh, on this uh, little adventure here. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the talk. I really enjoy these things. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if you guys want to see more of these, just let, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll do some more live feeds. And we'll chat about uh, whatever it is, you know. But uh, anyway, so that's it for me, guys. You guys take care. I'll see you again soon. You're freaking awesome. I love you. And uh, that's it. Take care, bro. Don't worry, I'm going to check it out, Green Alloy. I'll check it out. I promise you. Take care, guys.